What native oyster is that? Where is he at? There is no native oyster. It's hard to kill something that's not here. Well, there you go. How about that? Put that one on the air. <laughs> It was truly devastating. Basically, people had to find something else to do. My father was in the oyster business, and he was one of the biggest guys in the country in the oyster business. When I started in the 70s, we had plentiful oysters. Oh my God, it was unbelievable. What happened? Well, pollution. Pollution has been a significant problem but it hasn't been the problem that killed oysters. There they were. There were oyster reefs up the James River, up the York, up the Rappahannock, up the Patuxent, up the Potomac, from the tip of the Eastern Shore all the way to the Sassafras River. And we thought they would last forever. In Maryland, watermen could only use dredges and tongs, tools from 200 years ago. Harvesting oysters would always be hard work. That was the theory. So it really goes against the grain of human nature, but it does work. I mean, think of what our forests would look like if you had to cut all the trees with axes and hand saws. These oysters belong to no king, no corporation. They were everyone's oysters. They belonged to the man or woman willing to tackle them with the old time tools. The Chesapeake Bay would be a commons then, an oyster commons open to all. Like a dredge or a tong, it's an old idea. An American idea. If all this is public and you and I can, anybody can get licensed and go work out, then that, that, that's what this country's all about. I ain't gonna.